Improvement.
Okay, should I do it here? Let's put our hands together. And seek Shamatji's permission to allow us to meditate this morning at her lotus feet. raise our kundalinis and put ourselves in the bandha. Put both our hand to its motherhood. Shri Adi Kumi Devi. Kumi Devi. Shri Adi Kumi Devi. Sakshat. Shri Adi Shakti Madhaji Shri Nirmala Nitya Namaha The Yehu Adi Adi Shakti, I surrender at your lotus feet. I am the Spirit. And let the light of my spirit enlighten every corner of my brain, every nerve cell, every cell of my being. Mother, please 
you be the ruler of my brain. Please dissolve my thoughts. Mother, you who are the source of all thoughts, please dissolve my thoughts. Let my attention be surrendered at your lotus feet. In a nice deep breath in, let's move our attention down to the lower part. Raise our left hand, right hand, sorry, on Mother Earth. Attention on the left Muladha. Mother, you who are Sri Ganesha. I surrender to you. Mother, I am innocent. Move our left hand onto our lap and our right hand. Attention to the center of the heart. Mother Hugh, who are Shringali Ganesha. Please establish your presence at my Mulada. Please make me innocent. Please let the purity of Sri Ganesha establish within me in my attention, in my thoughts, in my actions.
put our left hand towards Mother Earth. Attention on the right one of the heart. Mother, you who are Shri Kartike, the son of Shri Parvati and Lord Shiva, I surrender at your lotus feet. Please establish your presence on my right moment heart. Mother, please make me worthy of your attention, of your appreciation. Mother, you who are Shri Kartikeya, you are destroyer of all the negativity within me. All the enemies of the soul within me. The six enemies. Father, please destroy all the evil, all the conditionings, the negative past memories, all the negative habits within me that draw my attention away from my spiritual ascent. Twami Vasakshat Sarva Rakshasa Hantri Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mahaji Shri Nirvana Nirvani Namo Move our attention from the Mulada to our Agya. I must have said lots of things about Christ before and how Jesus Christ is related to Sri Radhaji, that He is the incarnation of Sri Ganesha, who was the son of the Adishakti to begin with. 
But then he was given to Sri Radha Ji. And Sri Radha created as Mahalakshmi, as Mother Mary, this great incarnation of Christ. Now, for Western mind, it is impossible to understand how there can be a immaculate conception because they have no sense at all, no sensitivity at, at all to spiritual life. We Indians can understand it. It's very easy for Indians to understand because we had Sri Ganesha created that way. We just believe it, we don't doubt these things. Whatever is said about God is not to be doubted with this limited brain. That's not done in India. But in the West, from the very birth of Christ, they have had arguments, 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 arguments with this limited brain they had. And the whole religion in the name of Christ is just a perversion. Such a horrible things have been said that it's unbelievable. <coughs> his purity, His holiness, His auspiciousness is never understood in the West, I think. Those who follow, follow Christianity, how can they be so debased in their moral character? They are all right for their political, their economical, we can say their legal side, but their moral sense is absolutely missing. It's very surprising those who are followers of Christ should have the greatest amount of morality. He has said that thou shalt not have adulterous eyes, such a subtle thing. Even the eye should not have adultery, should not have lust and greed. Such a subtle thing he has said. It. And just think, in the West people could not follow it because the whole religion got perverted under the influence of Paul and Peter. It's a very serious thing they have done against Christ. But still going on, still this Catholic Church, though being so exposed so much, is still going on in India also, all over us is stupid. This Protestant Church also is going on everywhere. What good name have they brought to Christ? One should see. The first and foremost thing he has said, that you must enter into the kingdom of God, that you must be born again. So it's all mental, you are born again, you have a certificate, we are born again, finished. So this mental attitude of the West is responsible for killing the great incarnation of Christ. So I think is another crucifixion. Mentally you cannot understand spirituality. So they were telling me about brain trust, brain trust. I said, brain trust in, I can't understand in Sahaja Yoga. In Sahaja Yoga, what is the brain trust? Where is the brain? In thoughtless awareness, where is the brain? So this brain trust business might be all right for any other place, but for a Sahaja Yoga I still don't understand what do you do in brain trust. Because some people want to come on the stage and speak, you see, they have a kind of a madness, they can't get over it. So they might be coming to the brain trust, maybe but it's not brain, it's the heart. It's the heart which has to be opened out. Because with brain, what we do is all kinds of materialism, all kinds of nonsense has come from human brain only, not so much from animal's brain. You can see if you go to any forest, it's clean, nice, smelling so well. But put one human being there and you will know that this filth, dirt has come from some human being. 
So as it is they have made a mess of all the great incarnations, but worst is done to Christ. And I feel what a waste it was. So we must understand Christ in the right sense. He is the eternal child. He is the innocence itself. He is the source of innocence and He is the bestower of all blessings in all chakras. But that doesn't mean that you are Christians, you should be very proud that, oh, she's talking about Christ. Many, I have seen Sahaja Yogis, are still identified with Christ, while they have nothing to do with Christ at all. Now one has to understand that how Christ in His miraculous life has shown so many miracles. First of all, His birth was immaculate. kind of immaculate. They are beyond sins. They are special people. They may come as human beings, they may come as angels, they may come as anything. They are divine and we should understand that this little brain of ours cannot discuss about them and talk about them, but is to just surrender and worship them. They are much beyond us. So for the Western mind it is important to understand that the life of Christ was such a blessing for them that they have lost it, they have wasted it and they have never understood how to respect it. The whole thing became uh, like a political, economical, nonsensical fraud. I had told you long time back that how we can prove that Christ was Ganesha and He was the Logos, He was the, what we call is the Brahmanad, the first sound. By looking at your left side from the right side, if you see the Muladhara, you will see swastikas because it is made of carbon atom. If you see from left to the right, you can see Omkara. And if you see from down upward, it looks like Alpha and Omega. In those days Christ has said, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. And now we have made the animation, we have no arrangement to show you there, I don't know if you could arrange it somehow. But you can see it clearly what I have said can be proved. So as you worship Ganesha, you must worship Christ in the same manner for all those who worship Ganesha. Because I have seen that Hindus, they are stuck to Ganesha. Our Christians are stuck to Christ. Even after coming to Sahaja Yoga, they carry those traits. Ganesha is all right up to a point and then it is important we must pray to His incarnation, that is Christ. In the same way, those who worship Christ must also worship Ganesha because He is the source, He is the potential of Christ. All this was in the divine plan, done with divine discretion. Everything was done so beautifully. But as I told you, human beings are good at massacring anything that is beautiful. And that's how it has happened. It's very, very sad. And on His birthday today we have to decide that He is to be born within us again in a proper way, that He is the Alpha and the Omega. At that time of His time I didn't know that anybody knew about these symbols. These symbols also must have come from unconscious to some of the great mathematicians in long time, and that's why these symbols are used exactly like Alpha and Omega, you see Him clearly. 
It is so clear cut now in Sahaja. We can f prove so many things, all tangible. How Christ used to cure people, what did He do? It's all tangible. We can prove it now in Sahaja. How it works, how these powers work. But we have to first of all cleanse our lives. We have to lead a very honest, powerful, and pure life. I have seen those stalls outside. I told them not to put up any stalls here yeah. because they are making profit for themselves, not for such. Once Christ saw like that and He took a hunter and hit all of them. Now, I can't do that. One should not encourage these people. It's not a shopping center. You have come for meditation. It's all right if you need anything, we have bought things for you, if you buy them, there might be little profit, may not be, but that will go to Sahaja. It's not going to be used for any purp uh, private purpose. But these people from outside come and put up a stall and you all run about, means you are still hanging around with that thing. You have come here for what? One should be all the time meditative in Ganpati. All the time you should be in a meditative condition and don't, shouldn't get to these mundane things which you always do outside also. But these people know that you still have those weaknesses, that's why they have put up the stones. Leaders should stop all this nonsense. I have told not to eat outside. Last time all of you suffered because of that. But still the stalls are on. That means, see, they know there are some culprits who would like to buy things from them and get sick and bring bad news to surgery. So the first thing of Ganesha is that wisdom. And that wisdom we see in the life of Christ from the very beginning. He was so confident of it that at the age of twelve years he went and talked to these Farsis, means the people who were priests. We still have priests and mullahs and these bhajis and all of them, these so-called dharma martandas all over. But he went and argued with them at that young age. And he was just saying, what are you doing here? What is this? What are you talking? All lip service. He was discussing and talking to them, but his parents were perhaps were frightened that these people might kill him, so they brought him to India. He came to India for wisdom. I don't know where is that wisdom we see now from Indians. But must be this country was full of wisdom when he came and stayed in India. And we have lots of memories about him. Even the king Shalivahana met him, is described in his book that he met a man in Kashmir who was very saintly and he asked him, what's your name? He said, my name is Isa. See now, imagine Isa. E is the word used in Vedas for the Adishat. Sa means with. He said, My name is Isa. He said, From what country you come? He said, I come from a country which is foreign to me and this is my country. So, this India, the Bharat, the Hindustan was the country of spirituality. And one should not try to compete and feel inferior to other countries who have gone up materially higher. You don't know where they are. But we should be spiritually higher. That's what Christ said. This is my own country. It's clearly written. That means Christ recognized that this country of spirituality is His own. So we belong to that country of spirituality and not to the materialistic 
or to the mundane or the baser type of life. In his lifetime, which was so very short, whatever he has said, every word is great. But as I told you that this Paul tried to completely change, re-edit the Bible and his faith, put lots of things in there, whatever weaknesses he has, he has put there nicely. Now recently I've got a book which was hidden in a jar in Egypt for about till fifty years they discovered it. And this book is called as the Library of Hamadi, the place was called Hamadi, where it was discovered. Now what Christ has said, what Thomas has written, when Thomas was coming to India, he put all these things, it's very interesting. About drinking, he said, drinking begets debauchery, it's a bad word to use. And while Christians don't know, on the contrary, think, they think, that uh, drinking is allowed in Christianity, very nicely. Was he mad to allow drinking? How can he allow drinking, which goes your, against your awareness? But they thought it was nice, and that's what people have been using as a big uh, attraction that you can drink in Christianity. So in the other religion, like Catholic religion, you could have only once the marriage. So they have one marriage and ten keeps is all right allowed. The Bible is written, only you can have one marriage, you cannot divorce, so do what you like. No sense of morality and everything came like a derailment towards themselves. They accepted one after another all kinds of nonsense. And the basic thing of Christ's life is morality. He's on the left side, as you can see, he's from Sri Ganesha. And then he establishes himself at Agnya. But morality is the essence of his life. What we call in Indian language is character. Our character is how we lead a life of purity. We indulge into all kinds of nonsense. I mean, if you go to the West, you'll be amazed what things they do. I mean, you cannot even believe it, and I cannot even mention it to you. You won't believe that these so-called advanced countries are advancing towards you. Impossible, we cannot conceive it even. Such an impurity, such a horrible, destructive immorality. And I don't know from where it comes, I think something wrong with genetics. From where do they get these ideas? One after another, it's impossible possible to believe these people doing all these things and then nicely dress up and go to church on Sunday, pray to God and come back. Now it is for you to decide. You have to pull out all these people in your own countries and you have to tell them, this is all nonsense in the name of Christ, in the name of God. You have to come up and talk about it. Same about Sri Ganesh. I have seen in Pune, I was surprised, there was Ganesh also. Everybody was drinking nicely. The horrible dirty songs, some Western songs, some horrible cinema songs put up there, and everybody was using it as a disco in front of Sri Ganesh. Such a way should go and object to this kind of a nonsense that they, they, how could dare they drink in the presence of Sri Ganesh? No wisdom of Sri Ganesha 
no respect for his auspiciousness. Now, not only drinking, doing all kinds of things. Sri Ganesha has been shown by these tantrikas as something so horrible, which is also done by so many psychologists, so-called, in the West. Thank God one of them, this Mr. Freud, is exposed now. So the another quality of Ganesha is shown in Christ's life is the devotion to Mother. In that book, they, Mary is telling them about knowledge. But this all objects to it. And she says that this is what you have to achieve. But he doesn't want to, he's arguing with her. But then Thomas said that what Christ has said on the cross, behold the Mother. She is the Mother of Christ, and how dare you insult her? But just the opposite, Paul never respected women, so he appointed I mean, he called her as just a woman, no respect. For Mahalakshmi, no respect. Can you imagine? Just a woman. And a big controversy going on on these so-called advanced people, whether the women should be ordained as priests or not. We think we are very backward, but I think we are so backward in religion. Nonsense. We had Gargi, Maitreyi, such people here. And we respect the mother as the Adi Shakti. She is the one we call her, the one who has created us. She is the one who looks after us. For us, she is important, Shakti is important. They don't call her Shakti, but a woman. And supposed to be very advanced people. And all other nonsense they do in the name of advancement, it's impossible to tell. So my words fall short, feel so ashamed. In the name of Christ. Today now when we are celebrating the pure life of Christ, He came on this earth. They can't believe that He could have been so pure. A criminal cannot believe that others could be non-criminal. So we have to, within ourselves, see if we have developed that purity of mind that expresses through our eyes. Eyes have to become innocent. Otherwise they have no effect. If you are hankering after attracting other people and charming other people and all that, you are not a surgeon. There's no need. Once the light is within yourself, people will know. As surgeries, you have to have the light of Christ in your own life. He was a young man who came on this earth, and how he did. He had nothing to do with Mari Magdalini, who was a prostitute, but he stood by truth. And when people started stoning her, he stood up and said, those who have not committed any sin can throw the stone at me. What a strength of truth. So not that only he was a pure personality, but purity also is expressed in truth. And his compassion and love. Such compassion he has expressed. Such compassion. I think Sri Ganesha got a little transformation. Sri Ganesha is definitely very compassionate to people. 
who are worshipping Him. But those who go against them, He hits them hard. He does that. They have to suffer. AIDS, this, that, everything comes. But those who are pure people, Sri Ganesha protects. But Christ is compassionate and forgives because He believes that there could be a transformation. At the level of Sri Ganesha, He thinks it's better that let them be killed and be born again because they're so impure. But Christ had hopes that He can transform people. But He could not. They crucified Him. What wonderful people they must have been to crucify Christ. Brainless, we should call them, absolutely without any understanding about spirituality. Very insensitive to true knowledge. So for Sahaja Yoga only the wise can follow. It is not meant for stupid, idiotic people, nor it is meant for very smart ones. Some people think they are very smart because they are successful in life, they can say some smart sentences, they can say something very uh, outstandingly, very sharp. It's not meant for that. For that Christ has said, meek in heart will inherit the earth. Meek in heart. Not those who think too much of themselves, but who are meek in heart will in inherit the earth. Among Sahaja Yogis also, only those who are meek in heart will inherit the blessings of Mother. You have to be meek. You have to be wise. With wisdom you will become meek. Because then you will see where are we into this great cosmos. That you will feel that you have entered into this kingdom of God. For what? How? How have we come? How have we entered here? So many tried, thousands of years, sacrificing this, sacrificing that, standing on their heads, fasting. How is it suddenly we got this place? How are we there? When we start looking at this, we become meek the blessing, the grace. It's not through our ego, through our conditioning, but it's just the grace, the compassion, the love, the sandra karuna. And then you enjoy your transformed life, the new dimension of spirituality, which is in reality. Now you know reality, you know totality, you know everything, but those who have not known themselves have not become such a person. Tukarama has said in very simple words, apana si dani le jani. The one who has known himself is the last one. You can judge the chakras of others, but you can't judge your own chakras. You can introspect others, you can judge others, but you cannot judge yourself. If you know everything about others but about yourself, you don't know anything, then you are not such a thing. First thing you must know yourself, what sort of an ego stuff I am doing, what sort of a conditioning I have got. Even now people have so many conditionings. So there is a new discipline of Sajwa. In the new discipline you have to be meek, humble and you have to be wise. Every step of yours, every talk of yours, everything should express wisdom and the search discipline, which automatically stops you from doing wrong things. Now say I am walking down and some lady suddenly falls at my feet. Without even understanding that I am just walking, I may fall down. 
or catch his hold of my feet. It's all self-oriented. I should see Mother, I should go and meet her, I touched her feet. It's all ego. A Sahaja Yogi stands in the back. Real Sahaja Yogi is at the back. From there he can enjoy because he knows I am everywhere. He doesn't want to see me, nothing. Just like this. He doesn't force his way in any way. Mother is here. But this is what it is, Christ has said, meek in heart. There's a very big word, meek, and people don't understand meek, because in the West if you are meek, people say you are weak, you have to be aggressive. If they have to praise somebody, they say, oh, he is very good, he is very aggressive. I think their genetics are a little lower than normal. Must be some animals in them. Otherwise, how can they think that to be aggressive is being something higher. It's impossible. How can a person who is supposed to be a higher person could be like a devil? How could Hitler say that he was a higher race when he was himself a devil? It's very nice for a devil to say, I'm a higher race. So in Dili, in Sahaja Yoga, the sweetness of natural meekness, not artificial of a businessman, but a natural one that makes you shine with your great, great spirituality. Nobody can touch you, I have told you, except for you. You can only fall down but nobody can touch you, you are all protected from every angle. But if you want to hit yourself, I can't help you. So again we come to Tukarama saying, as Christ has said, know thyself. First and foremost thing of introspection is know thyself. What you are doing? Are you trying to look at yourself or not? He has also said that we see a big beam into the eyes of others, then it's all right. But the beam is in your eyes, and you start seeing the beam in other eyes, and that's the point. So in your meditation you have to sit down and first of all introspect, O oh Christ, O oh Sri Ganesha, please give me wisdom to see myself and understand what's wrong. And understand where do I lack all the qualities of a good surgeon. Just to meditate and you'll feel so happy, so joyous, because virtue within you gives you joy. But you don't say, I'm virtuous, you don't say that. But the virtue within you, when you discover, that gives you joy and not your bad qualities and your uh, hankerings, your lust and greed. No, it does not. So we must really concentrate even coming to Sahaja Yoga, people think how I can use it for, say, uh, faith, leadership, you see, is another myth. Then they sometimes think, why not use it for making some money somehow? Some sort of a business this time. Don't do any business with Sahaja Yoga or Sahaja Yoga. I've told hundred times, if you do it, you'll be in trouble. And then don't come and tell me the trouble. Sahaja Yoga is only God's business. Everything that you are doing 
is for God and that's why you are doing it for yourself. So introspection is very important. Criticizing others should be less. Or criticizing yourself and laughing at yourself. I laugh at myself many a times and say many things like that, if you have noticed. That makes life so interesting. That will kill your ego. How I am trying to assert myself and where is the meekness that Christ has talked about? It is a natural goodness within us. Once it shines and shows, become so beautiful, so lovable. Whether you are sitting here near me or there, I know who is that guy. My heart just opens for such a personality. I know who they are. But even if I know, I will never tell you. It is better that you know yourself. Know thyself is His message, in a real way, not with deception, because you are deceiving yourself. Whom are you deceiving? Know thyself without any deception, without any lies, with full concentration. See where is your attention going. That's how you are going to rise. You are not going to rise by seeing the defects of others, but you are going to rise only by seeing your own defects. Exactly this is what Christ has said. I am telling you in very, very simple words. Then He has said, love thy neighbor as thyself. This is a very, very big thing to say. Now it is only possible in such a way, because you are collective, those who are not corrective, how can they love their neighbor? I mean, who is the neighbor then? Nobody is the neighbor, they are outsiders. But as soon as you become collective, see today there are 55 nations, we are all so collective, so moral, so beautiful, no complications, nothing, I am so overjoyed to see that. But to make it perfect, we should introspect. Socially, collectively, you people have improved a lot but also individually, within yourself, you have to improve for your own goodness. So on this great occasion, we have to celebrate because really such a great amount of work was done by Christ, though neutralized by these horrible priests, which is done in every country, in every religion. But now we should take a vow to save others, who are taking the name of Christ and doing something just the opposite. If it could be done, if it could be achieved through your lives, Christ's work has been done. You have to now express Christ through your life. This is what it is. Through your life you can express it, through the purity, through the meekness, through the compassion, and the wisdom of Christ. Absolutely fearless was He. And that's why you have to be fearless, because you have to be only afraid of God and nobody else. That's all. And if you have done nothing wrong, there's nothing to be afraid of God also, because He loves you. So be clear-cut about everything, be understanding. You are all lovable people, no doubt, but you should be such that you can adore yourself and love yourself because of the virtues you have. May God bless you.
to just spend a few minutes meditating on Mother's words of keeping our attention on the Agya. Mother, please let your lotus feet reside on my Agya Chakra. Please give me the wisdom to see myself to see my shortcomings. Mother, please let my natural meekness shine through my personality, establish in my personality. Please let me be humble and wise. Mother, I surrender my ego and super ego at your lotus feet. May we attention to the Sastra.
May God bless you all. May God bless you all. May God bless you all. down and offer our thanks to Sri Mataji for the opportunity of this morning's collective meditation. Raise our kundalinis and put ourselves in a bandhan. Have a great weekend everyone.
हाँ 